Hey everyone, Jose here from Yugatech, and today we're doing another quarterly roundup video. In this video, we're going to be doing a rundown of smartphones released in the Philippines from July to September of 2024 that are priced between 6,000 to 10,000 pesos. Take note that the pricing details listed here reflect the phone's suggested retail price at launch or SRP. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. Oh, and by the way, before we start, we also released other Q3 lists that you can already watch right here or, of course, in the description box down below if you haven't watched them already. And as always, these phones are listed in no particular order. So we start off with the ITEL P65, the only model in this list that features a gaming aesthetic. I mean, it won't be as good as a true gaming phone, but at least it looks the part, right? I mean, fake it till you make it. It sports a mecha-inspired back panel and a color-changing ring light as well. This design kind of reminds me of the POVA series from Tecno or even the Infinix GT20 Pro, which are gaming phones. Now, under the hood, the P65 features a Unisoc T61 5 chipset configured with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of expandable storage. At the front, it sports a 6.7-inch HD Plus IPS LCD panel with a 120Hz refresh rate. Cameras are decent with a 50 megapixel main shooter alongside an auxiliary lens. The battery is rated at 5000 mAh with capacity for support 18 watt charging. The iTel P65 retails for just only 6,599 pesos. Next, we have two models from the Realme C series, the Realme C61 and the Realme C65. Starting with the C61, it features the Unisoc T612 with up to 8GB of RAM and up to 256GB of expandable storage. For the display, it sports a 6.74-inch HD Plus IPS LCD panel, but with only a 90Hz refresh rate. At the rear, the camera island looks very familiar, but also sus. You know what I mean. It houses two cameras, a 50 megapixel main shooter and a 2 megapixel auxiliary lens. The battery is also rated at 5000 mAh capacity with a 15 watt charging rate. The Realme C61 starts at just 6,999 pesos for the 6 plus 128 gigabyte trim, while the 8 plus 256 gigabyte variant goes for 7,999 pesos. Now we move on to the Realme C65, which has a slight resemblance to this one. The Galaxy S22 design, except the material used here shows a bit of a flare effect. It runs on the MediaTek Helio G85, which is a bit more powerful chipset combined with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of expandable storage. The display is a 6.67 inch HD plus IPS LCD running at only 90Hz refresh rate once again. Now, if you'll notice, it seems like the 50 megapixel main camera plus a depth sensor is a staple in this entry level segment because all of the models we have discussed so far feature such a camera setup, including this one. Anyways, the battery is the usual 5000 mAh unit, but it gets a much faster 45 watt charging rate. Compared to the C61, the Realme C65 retails for 9,999 pesos, making it the most expensive entry in this list. Now we turn our attention to the Xiaomi Redmi 13, which should offer the most value for money. It's the only model out of the bunch that comes with a full HD plus IPS LCD panel. While it only runs at 90 Hertz, it does have Gorilla Glass on top of it to give it some extra layer of protection. It runs on a MediaTek Helio G91 Ultra, which is a faster chipset than the likes of the G85, configured with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of expandable storage. Compared to the others, the cameras are sure enticing with a 108 megapixel main sensor alongside a 2 megapixel macro sensor. However, do note that despite the high megapixel count, it still won't be as good as high-end models that have a much better sensor. As for the battery, it packs a 5030 mAh battery. Yes, specifically 5030, according to Redmi, with a 33 watt charging rate. The Redmi 13 sets you back only 7,999 pesos. For the same price as the Redmi, which is 7,999 pesos, we have the Vivo Y28 offering the biggest battery on this list, a whopping 6,000 mAh unit with 44 watt charging rate. Under the hood, it runs on the MediaTek Helio G85 chipset with 8GB of RAM and up to 256GB of expandable storage. Up front, you get a 6.68-inch HD Plus IPS LCD panel with also a 90Hz refresh rate. And as you would have guessed, the cameras are also a 50MP main sensor with a 2MP depth sensor. Again, the Vivo Y28 starts at 7,999 pesos for the 8 plus 128GB variant. 
Last but definitely not the least is the OPPO A3 equipped with the Snapdragon GS 4G Gen 1 chipset, which is a glorified Snapdragon 662 from 2020. That might be the case, but Qualcomm does say it's got an improved CPU and GPU. Moving on though, for config, the phone packs 6GB of RAM and 128GB of expanded storage. It only has a single rear camera alongside a flicker sensor. And its battery is a bit higher than usual with a 5100mAh unit paired with a 45W charger. The OPPO A3 sets you back 8,999 pesos. And that wraps up this quick list. Among all of them, which one would you get them very soon? And more importantly, which do you think is the best buy in this price range? Whatever the case, share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in helping you buy which in your next phone, do drop a like and subscribe to watch more. Don't forget to follow us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. And of course, visit yougetech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Also, you can check out some of our full reviews of these phones now live on the Yugetek website. Once again, this is Minose, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Jenny.